Good morning to all our online viewers. Welcome to the Let's Talk It Over webinar. I am Ria Valerie Cabanes, your moderator for today. This webinar series is organized by the Master of Arts in Nursing program under the Faculty of Management and Development Studies. This is now our third episode for the nursing theories and models in the Philippine context. Last week, we had our second episode with Dr. Carmelita de Vinagracia, wherein she inspired us on the use of her composure model in several researches. Today's LTIO will tackle technological competency as caring in nursing. Before we call on our speaker for today, let me share some reminders. We will have a question and answer portion after the presentation. You can put your questions in the comment box sections of the UPOU Network's website and the UPO Open University Network's Facebook page. Now, let me introduce to you our speaker. He is a professor emeritus at Florida Atlantic University, Christine E. Lean College of Nursing, an honorary professor at Barara University of Science and Technology in Uganda. He is also serving as a visiting professor in St. Paul University, Tugegarao, Cagayan Valley, and in Suleiman University in Dumaguete City. He is a member of the ed editorial board of the Pacific Cream International Journal of Nursing Research, Thailand Nursing and Midwifery Council. A manuscript reviewer in American Journal of Nursing, Journal of Clinical Nursing, Blackwell LTD, and International Nursing Review. Aside from this, he had published several articles in different journals and publications, book chapters, and even authored his own books. He is also a member of different organizations such as International Association for Human Caring, Philippine Nurses Association, Society for the Arts and in Healthcare, Florida Nurses Association, and Asian Americans and Pacific Islanders Nurses Association, just to name a few. He had won several awards here in the Philippines and internationally. Please let us all welcome Dr. Rosano C. Loxin. Hi, uh, good afternoon. Uh, good afternoon, good morning, sorry. <laughs> okay, all right. Um, thank you very much for that introduction, uh, Ria. And, um, my intention today is to present to you the theory of technological competency as caring in nursing. And I think Ria, uh, Ria failed to mention that I'm a fellow of the American Academy of Nursing, of which there are now three new members from the Philippines, right? Um, that's uh, Castor Palaganas, AC Palompon, and to be inducted in October will be MJ Dino, all right? So uh, that is really a, a good, fit, a, a good a record for, for the Philippines. Um, we have I've been inducted in 2006, so uh, it's been a lonely place, right? Well, there are many, many Filipinos, uh, probably about 20, but they're not based in the in the, in the Philippines. So I'd like to mention that okay? it's very important. Uh, it's meant to be an incentive for those who are in the academic uh, community, as well as in practice, uh, by the way, not only academic, okay? All right, so uh, without much ado, um, shall we start? Okay, so um, many times a lot of, um, uh, not a lot, but some people would think this is, this is technological competence as caring in nursing. Um, but uh, there, there must be a difference between technological competency as caring in nursing. I haven't really asked the question from a, a linguist or a, um, a, who's an English uh, professor, but I think uh, the, 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 this title has always been technological competency as caring in nursing. This is an important consideration because you can be technologically competent, right, in nursing. That's that's a given, right? But it is technological competency as caring that, that, that the theory is all about. Okay, technological competency as caring in nursing. Okay. All right. So this is the abstract of my presentation. Um, 
Assumptions of this theory uh, imply understanding of concepts such as wholeness of persons as the focus of nursing and of knowing persons as caring. This is important, knowing persons as caring, because that is what the theory is all about. Technological competency as caring. So we have to know the person as caring person. Right? So I'll, I'll explain that in, in more detail as we go along with this uh, presentation. Technological knowing, mutual designing, and participative engaging is the process of nursing. Now, we are very familiar with the nursing process, which is the traditional um, uh, guide practice, okay? which has been in, in, in service, I'd like to say, since probably 50, 60 years ago, uh, based on the idea that um, nursing wants or it need, needed to elevate uh, the, the practice of nursing from a um, from a uh, how shall I put this apprenticeship model, right? Following certain orders to sim to simply doing a practice that is grounded in certain uh, guidelines. And so, uh, following the following the process of uh, medical uh, practice, so we have assessment, planning, intervention, and evaluation. That's the traditional nursing process, which is assessment, planning, intervention, and evaluation, right? But for, for, from, from the 60s to the 70s, we, already, we, we had um, developed a lot of uh, nursing theories uh, for the purpose of elevating our uh, understanding of the discipline and profession of nursing, particularly the professional practice, right? So we, most uh, nursing theories uh, will have its own practice theories. So this is the, the process, practice process of nursing grounded in the theory of technological competency as caring in nursing is technological knowing, mutual designing and participative engaging, okay? So um, I'd like to emphasize that as well. So if you want to practice technological competence as caring in nursing as a theory-based practice, you need to practice it using technological knowing, uh, mutual designing and participative engaging. Okay, so implications for nursing research, which is which is the focus for uh, for us to advance the process of the, the discipline and profession of nursing to advance our own knowledge as basis for our practice. We need to do nursing research, meaning uh, research about nursing, not research about health health uh, phenomena, not about uh, nutritional phenomena, right? Not about physiology, uh, not about anatomy, but phenomena about nursing okay so that's important to understand as well so nursing research and practice are explained as critical to the development of nursing and its practice okay so that's the the, the abstract of my presentation today okay. I always... okay so these are the objectives okay and okay so these are the focal points of the theory the framework the conceptual framework is grounded in nursing as caring which is, uh, which is a general, uh, general theory. Boyk and Ashwanafer calls it a grand theory, right? Um, and it is focused on the idea that all persons are caring by virtue of their humanness. And I also adapted that, that assumption because of the idea that a knowing person as caring is, uh, is an assumption of the, of, um, is the process of nursing that we use in the theory of technological competency as caring in nursing. Okay, so nursing as caring is a conceptual framework. The achievement of technological competence is an exercise with the process of knowing persons as caring, knowing persons as caring, who remains whole and complete in the moment. Okay, All right. very important to understand is that it's a conception as well, that, that, that the persons remain whole and complete in the moment. Nothing is missing, nothing is lacking. The person remains whole moment to moment. Okay, as a nursing, as an as, a, as nursing is a practice discipline, knowing persons as caring is the focus of nursing practice. Right? That is how we practice nursing using the process. And technological, technology, caring, and competence are, in, are the main concepts that constitute the framework of technological competency as caring in nursing. Technological knowing, which is, um, I think, uh, the, the, I would call it the initial uh, activity in, in the process of nursing, is, the, uh, is appreciating persons using technologies of care. Okay, so we all use technologies. Technology doesn't mean machine technologies. Technology is anything that makes things efficient. Right? That is technology. So anything that makes things efficient, that is technology. So uh, in the process of, of uh, understanding what it, uh, technological competence is caring in nursing, we have to utilize all available 
uh, technologies uh, in order to know persons more fully as persons. Okay, all right. So persons are human beings who are living meaningful lives who cannot be reduced to parts. Okay, you cannot um, uh, you cannot make a person uh, from different parts. Okay, this is an assumption that we need to understand because um, the original, uh, not original, but the prior philosophical perspective of what a human being is. Right. So asking the question, what is a human being? Uh, prior to the 1940s, or or actually between the 40s and the 60s. The philosophical perspective was that human beings are made up of parts and so a whole being when you say a human being is a summation of the different parts that's why we study anatomy physiology biochemistry uh, physiology uh, all those other different sciences because putting those things together make up the whole person okay that was a philosophical perspective in order for us to understand what is a human being however uh, with with uh, Thomas Kuhn, right? K U H N, uh, you had a whole new perspective. We call that the the phenomenon. We call it the paradigm shift, right? And I know you 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 may you will be you are uh, familiar with that term, right? So we now look at persons as always whole in the moment. They do not. There is no missing parts. Um, and, and in other words, they uh, the in order to know persons as caring. You have to know the person as a whole, regardless of missing parts. Okay, um, you may want to ask the question: What happens if your belief, if you philosophically understand the person as summation of parts? What happens if the person does not have an arm? Right, that means that person is not a human being anymore. Right, but that is not so. You would also you would always say, oh, they're they they are still persons exactly. Right. So that is my, my, that is my point. Persons remain whole regardless of missing parts. And that's a historicist human science perspective. Okay? So from the logical positivist empiricist perspective to the historicist human science perspective, which is what we are uh, understanding it uh, today. Okay? So persons are whole, as whole is derived from the views of persons as always changing, dynamic, and continuously growing growing regardless of missing and composite parts right so this puts into perspective the question of um, planning okay when you do the apie you make your nursing care plan right and so you make a nursing care plan that, 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 that by the time you go to practice your care plan is now uh, useless because a person has changed okay so these are some of the things that we have to you have to we have to understand it's a dynamic uh, individual okay cannot be predicted Okay, because we are one of the characteristics of a human being is unpredictability. Okay, all right. So therefore, persons do not need to be fixed or to be made wholes again. This allows us to understand when I say um, knowing persons as whole from moment to moment, they are always whole. So they do not need any fixing. Okay, all right. So um, because they are whole, how then can we see or know uh, the outcomes of your care. I'm just using that word outcomes of care, right? Uh, it's not a, a, a perspective in, in this theory, but the care that you provide assumes that we are celebrating, affirming, uh, confirming what the person really aims or wants to be, right? So if the person wants to go home, that is how we're going to practice our, our, our nursing, right? Because you would say, so how can this person go home when he has he just had post-operative uh, um, activity or right? post-operative intervention? Well, you understand very well they cannot just go home, right? So you need to address the care of this patient so that the patient can ultimately go home, right? So that's that's the idea of uh, knowing the person. The person does not need fixing, okay? Does not need to be made holes again. Uh, that that's a that's an empiricist. Um, perspective grounded in the idea that persons are made up of different parts. Okay, um, persons are not automatons or robots that can be can predictably be made to perform. All right, all right. So you can't just say, okay, you go home. This is what you take to you take, and uh, when you go home, you research planning, so and so, so and so, and then five days later, the patient is back. Okay, and then you complain, why? What have you been doing? Well, you did not really know the person, right? You did not really know that the person, so your person probably had no money to buy food, right? No money to buy uh, whatever is, uh, is is healthy food, 
So, tuyo ang kinakain. So, these are some of the things that we need to understand. Know the person more fully as person so that you can advise or appreciate who is this person as person, okay? Not because it was ordered by the physician, okay? And these are the medications and so, but allow the person to vent, to, to inform you who he or she is because, because this is where your mutual designing comes into play, right? So technological knowing, mutual designing, participative engaging. If you don't know the person, right? If, you're, if your purpose is simply to discharge the patient, it becomes a, a, it becomes a, uh, a, a rationalization, right? When the person really is, uh, is back uh, to the hospital, okay? Because that is what's, what has happened. Persons are not human bodies identified only as objects. So this, this points to the idea of what we mean by patient, okay? If we understand what is a patient, patient is, you know, you just wait for something to happen to you, okay? That is being a patient, right? So many times we, we, we think in this, in this theory, we, we refrain from using the word patient, although sometimes I have to use it, okay? So, um, so uh, the term to use would be person being nursed or the nurse, okay? Because that, that differentiates the whole idea, not the client, Client is a business term. Uh, we're not lawyers, for example, or businessmen. They're not clients, okay? All right? So patient, all right? We don't use the word patient because if the, because of the meaning of what patient is. Although it is universally understood as patient, we have to re, rethink what the meaning of patient is. They are, not, they are not objects of care. They are participants of their, of their care. Right? Otherwise, if they become objects, that, is a that was a perspective 50, 60 years ago. Right? Why? Because you know, the person of authority knows who the person, I mean, what the person needs. Okay? So this is, uh, the person comes in with diabetes, right? And so this is what you do, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, fine. But not all persons respond to diabetic, to care, or pay, or care processes of uh, uh, diabetes similarly so you have to know the person how does this person respond to this kind of care right so know the person's more fully as person that's very important there are individuals who possess values of dignity and autonomy and who strive to live their hopes their dreams and aspirations as caring persons so that's why i said what is what is the reason why this patient came into your uh, came into the hospital for care right uh, this person came because this person wants to wants to get well right gets well and how are you going to, to to facilitate this this wellness right um there's not much you can do uh un unless your practice of nursing is simply following physicians orders then you just have to do that but what happens to the professional uh discipline of nursing okay there's no theoretical basis what what, what now right so we're back to the 1960s where we just simply follow physicians orders right we must have our own process of nursing. And this is where your technological knowing, mutual designing and participative engaging comes into play, okay? So this is now your practice uh, practice theory, your practice process, right? Okay, all right. I always, okay, oh, sorry. So objectification of person, I, I, I think I did uh, a lot of this discussion becomes the new normal. Okay, which is an, an old uh, prescription. Describing nursing practice as the completion of tasks does not serve the profession well. Okay, if it is simply to to okay, this is a good point. If you see, if your nursing practice is simply the completion of tasks, my robots will do a better job. Okay, they can do more precise activities. They will not have monthly periods. All right. I can simply plug, okay, no malingering, okay, if it's simply task, uh, uh, task completion, but I think nursing is more than that, right, so we have to revisit what is the ontology of nursing, okay, so uh, I know some, some of you may be asking later on, um, so can human beings, uh, can human, uh, humanoid robots replace human nurses? I'd like you to consider that question. I actually wrote about it in 2018, right? And I hope uh, you were able to read that uh, so that you can be also informed that persons, okay, not that nursing is more than completion of tasks, okay? So please, uh, when we do our exercise of skillfulness, when we go to the laboratory, 
okay, nursing skills laboratory. Why do we do that? It's not because the, 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 the teacher is there monitoring how skillful you are, but it is these are becoming this these uh, skillfulness becomes your instrument, okay, through which you can know the person more fully as person. Right? That's the ultimate goal of being skillful. So that's why you do all this uh, nursing skills laboratory activities. Okay, so the professional nurse is challenged to be technologically masterful, responding authentically. Okay, you have to ask. Okay, you have to ask yourself, why am I here? Why am I in the presence of this patient? I know, I know uh, that uh, we need a job. I know we need to earn. I know we need to care for our families. Okay, but remember that your your object of care is actually uh, oh, the, the the reasons for your for your being there is actually the, the person. Okay, so uh, authentically you have to be there present. Not so this is where. Uh, I assume that many errors come into play when you are not present for the patient. Okay, you give medications, but you're thinking of uh, your your date later on, okay, or your uh, dinner later on. Okay, so you're probably giving the wrong medications. Okay, so we need to we need to really be authentically and intentionally present for uh, the person who, whom we nurse. Okay. So this authenticity and, intention and intentionality are demonstrated when the nurse accepts the person and, and attempts to know the person fully as a caring person and living her or his hopes, dreams, and aspirations. Okay. All right. And so um, these are some of the descriptions of technological competency that I figured out uh, as caring in nursing occurs when caring and technologies in nursing coexist. It's not technological competence and caring. No, that is that's those are not that is not how we this theory is uh, translated. Okay, it's technological competency as caring. They're one. Okay, yeah, it's not technologically technological competence. In order, uh, you'll be technologically competent. Therefore, you are a caring person. Okay, right? so it's technological competence as caring. That's that's the the whole idea. The harmonization of this concept places the practitioner of nursing in the context of modern healthcare, acknowledging that both concepts can exist together, okay? Technology brings the patient closer to the nurse, and at times technology can also increase the gap between the nurse and the person being nursed. So um, going back to um, Patricia Benner's uh, from novice to expert, right? So the, the, the first level of her uh, uh, expert uh, perspective was that was as competency, beginning competence, right? The beginner, right? So many times when the when the person when you have a new staff, for example, when they come to your to your practice setting, you must remember that this person is not an expert, right? So your responsibility as a nurse, as a head nurse, as uh, or or uh, as person responsible for orientating this person is to inform to take this person under your wing so that this person can know and understand how nursing is practiced best in your unit, okay? You are not there to evaluate whether or not this person is able, is able to do these things uh, now. Okay? That you should assume that this person does not know all the things so that it is your responsibility to make sure that this person will be able to, to practice nursing in the best possible way, especially in your, in your unit, okay? So think about that very seriously because Many times we, uh, a lot of a lot of um, older nurses, or not older, but experienced nurses, uh, uh, they 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 succumb to the idea of uh, nurses eating their young. Okay, so um, we should refrain from that. But in fact, be mentors, right? Mentors to to, to facilitate our um, uh, the care right, of the person. You're only not caring for the patient, but also also caring for the person who's going to be your new nurse. Okay, so make sure that you you think about that very seriously. When technology is used to know persons as caring continuously in the moment, the process of nursing is lived with meaning. Okay, so it's meaningful. Okay, and that's the idea, uh, living the meaning of one's own life. Okay, which is which uh, Boykin and Shonafer calls is personhood. Okay. So what is technology? Anything that makes things efficient. Technology in relation to nursing is viewed as a means to an end, as 
and as a human activity. Everything depends on manipulating technology in the proper manner as means. So when you are being skillful right, with technologies, it's, it, is, uh, it, is a, um, it is a manner, it is a means to achieve the goal. Right? That's why we have technological knowing. So um, we talked about technology. Now we will talk about uh, what is a caring person. So uh, my my uh, description of a caring person is based on two works of uh, prominent, I would say, prominent uh, uh, caring scholars. Okay, we have ingredients of caring by Milton Mayeroff, right, and attributes of caring by Sister Simone Roach, and uh, you will see uh, some familiar uh, attributes of caring. Because the, I think the Board of Nursing used to you, uh, uses uh, most of these uh, attributes of caring by Sister Simone Roach: Com competence, compassion, confidence, commitment, conscience, and comportment. Right. While uh, not much is being talked about uh, the ingredients of caring, which is knowing, alternating rhythms, patience, hope, humility, trust, courage, and honesty. So let me just go quickly, okay, for to each of these. Um, uh, uh, concepts or, or, or terms, right? So knowing. So a person who is a caring person is, is uh, adept at knowing. Your intention is to know persons more fully as persons. So you, you're, you're, you must want to know, okay? That's the idea, right? Uh, you must want to know. So knowing. Alternating rhythm is knowing when to move or advance your understanding of the person and when to backtrack, backtrack a little bit Okay, because the person probably uh, does not understand your 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 knowing your your assessment, for example, and so you have to backtrack a little bit and try to explain what it is that you want to know, right? And so alternating rhythms. So you need you need to know when to backtrack, when to move forward, and the understanding that uh, there is a rhythmic rhythmical patterning, right? When you do uh, when when you are a caring person, right? The responsibility is yours, right? Patience. You must your patience. Uh, you must allow uh, the other to grow in his own time and in his in his own way. Okay. You cannot force a person to grow, right? So otherwise, right? You know what's going to happen. This person will say, "Yes, yes, yes, I'm growing," but actually the person is not, right? So you have to allow the person to grow. Hope, hope that this person will grow in his own time and in his own way, right? must be that hoping okay because otherwise it becomes a, a a problem when you when you are patiently waiting okay, for this person to grow to grow when it, when you say grow to, towards understanding towards knowing towards do what what to do right based on your uh process of uh nursing okay so you must hope that this person will grow in his own time and in his own way and humility we cannot know everything okay so be humble Right, and so allow yourself to know. Right? That's the that's the important thing. Right, we cannot know everything. Maybe the, the the person you are nursing knows more than you about their own conditions, and you should remember that the internet is full of information. Okay, what your role may be is to clarify which one is more is more appropriate. Okay, because there are so many things in the uh, through the internet that may not be true, especially for this particular. Uh, situation so knowing what the person is is experiencing what the experience what the person's uh, diagnosis is or, or or medications and things like that your your role may be to clarify what it is what it is and you can only do that if you know the person more fully as person trust trust and hope trust that this person will grow in his own time and in his own way right you have to trust this person okay uh, otherwise if there is no if you are going to be mistrusting Okay, you will always you will always doubt what the person is trying to do, okay, and that becomes a, a problem. Anything that the person would like to say will not we will always have a tinge of uh, of doubt okay? or falsehood, right? So you must trust that this person will grow in his own time and in his own way. Courage, right? Courage to say I do not know. Isn't that isn't that very uh, uh, problematic to some people? 
I do not know. Oh, you have to have the courage to say, I do not know. Let me find out the details. Because if you try to, to respond okay, to questions and you, you don't really know, you create more problems. Okay. So courage is very important as well. And honesty, honesty, humility, courage. Right. So honesty to say that I don't know. Okay. And that my, 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 my intent is to know more about who you are as a person. So those are the ingredients of caring, and I would hope um, we would read this uh, this book. It's a, it's, it's a thin book. It's probably about one fourth inch thick. Okay, and it's I think it's available. Uh, and it's, I, to me, it's a nice read. Okay, um, if, uh, if you want, there are examples. Okay, for example, because uh, Mayor Roth is not a nurse. Okay, but I think she uh, uh, he is I think a psychologist. Right, so. Um, uh, Boykin and Shonifer actually uh, based uh, their discussion of nursing as caring, uh, caring from uh, Milton Mayer of and Sister Simone Roach. Similarly, that's how I, I also noted the idea of attributes of caring and ingredients of caring from Boykin and Shonifer's nursing as caring theory. Okay? For example, Mayer of gave an example. If you want your child to learn how to ride the bike, okay, right? Uh, how would you allow this? Okay. If you're always by the by your son's uh, side, right, that son will have difficulty riding the bicycle because he or she will always be looking at that she he will always be uh, wanting to know whether he is doing it the right way or the wrong way or so and so. Let him be. The person might fall, right? The child might fall. Good. Okay. Then you have you should be ready to pick him up, right, and teach him more. So that they will, so that the person will not fall again. So these are some of the things uh, we cannot be hovering over a person, okay? Because if that person, if even that is so, that person will not will lose the autonomy of being a person. Okay, so that's uh, that's uh, kind of uh, part of caring, and uh, that's also an expression of alternating rhythms. Now, Sister Simone Roach's attributes of caring, right? This is where I got my technological competency as caring in nursing. Competence, right? Competence, compassion, right? Feeling for the other, right? Uh, not empathy, but compassion, right? Actually, um, Sister Simone Roach uh, had a statement that I always uh, refer to: uh, "Competence without compassion is brutal, okay? but compassion without competence is irresponsible." Okay? So this should guide you in your in your practice of nursing. You might you can be competent. But you must also be comp compassionate, because if compassion is missing, your practice of, of whatever competent competent uh, activity will be, will lose the idea of feeling for the other, which is your compassion. Confidence, I must know. Okay? I must know, uh, and that in order for me to commit to this to this knowing, I must I must have that competence. Okay? Confidence, conscience. Uh, con these, these attributes of caring are often uh, made real, uh, shall we say, in, in uh, student uh, experiences or even uh, in post conferences, for example. Not only will you study the pathophysiology, which is, which is often the objective of post conferences, right? We study well, what is the uh, pathophysiology of this disease and so on. So that brings you only to the biomedical aspect of what is a, what is a nurse. But you should also look at how how did you as nurse or nursing student uh, express uh, express your caring? Okay? How was how was competence, compassion, confidence, commitment, conscience, and comportment re be, uh, reflected in your practice of nursing? Right? So this this puts uh, a, a a different perspective, not only the biomedical perspective, but also a perspective of nursing, because Sister Simone Roach. Is a nurse, and this is a, a theoretical perspective or framework coming from uh, uh, a nurse, right? So characteristics or attributes of what is a caring person. Okay, all right. So let's proceed. So competence as caring, true technological competence in clinical nursing practice can be understood as an expression of caring. Okay, all right. Uh, so these are the assumptions of my of my theory. I, I just kind of uh, discussed what were the 
other concepts. Okay, so persons are caring by virtue of their humanness. Right? This is very important because remember, um, uh, it, this theory is about technological competency as caring in nursing. Okay, it's not technological competency as nursing. Okay, technological competency as caring in nursing. The idea is as caring because the belief, the assumption in this theory is that all persons are caring because they're human beings. So we must know the person as caring person. Okay, you, you understand, right? Okay, all right. So persons are always whole or complete in the moment. Okay, and this is a historicist or human science perspective. Okay, different from a, a empiricist uh, positivist perspective. Knowing persons is a process of nursing that allows for continuous appreciation of persons as caring. Okay. So nursing is a discipline and a professional practice. And technology is used to know persons as caring and whole from moment to moment. Okay. So human beings are always whole. I know this, this moment to moment oftentimes turns off a lot of a lot of persons because they don't seem to understand what what, what does it mean to be whole moment to moment. Okay. So you can say technology is used to know persons as caring uh, in the moment. Okay. That's that's uh, that, that that is okay, right? Because the next moment that person will not be whole, all right? But rather, uh, it's not that the, the next moment the person will not be whole, but it's always whole, okay? So depending on the moment. Okay. All right. So the ideal of knowing persons as caring, knowing persons is a process of nursing using technologies of nursing achieves that which is what the nurse is trying to express, okay? So uh, this is just uh, supposedly to illustrate what, uh, what knowing persons as caring is. It's a handshake, okay? Not necessarily the, the handshake itself, but a, a relationship, okay? A mutual relationship between the nurse and the person being nursed. Say so the ultimate purpose of technological competency as caring in nursing is to know persons more fully as caring persons. Every human being responds uniquely to personal conditions in the moment, okay? Um, a good example of this will be, uh, so your blood pressure today, when you get the blood pressure, it's 140 over 80, right? Uh, so you call, you call somebody to counter check and now it's maybe changed. It's now 130 over 82 or something because the body responds differently from moment to moment. So this is the universal technological node domain. It's one of the newer uh, concepts in the theory um, uh, based on the understanding that all the technologies, uh, the domain of uh, technology um, is not only within the realm of engineering, right? Or, or um, uh, computer science, okay? In, in nursing, we have, okay? And then this is through this uh, universal technological domain that I have identified, or the UTD as it's commonly called. So knowing persons is the process of nursing. So if, you, if you'll note uh, this, um, this is the Mobius, okay? Those who are, uh, common uh, who understand uh, mathematics or like mathematics can understand what this Mobius is. It is a continuous uh, structure, right? That oftentimes uh, presents well, there is no beginning and there is no end. And that is how the process of nursing is lived, okay? You don't really say, oh, I already know the person. The person has diabetes, right? That's, that's not possible because the, the, the person is always uh, it's always uh, it's unpredictable, it's always moving, it's always changing, okay? So, um, so that's why the Mobius is a good uh, representation for what is uh, knowing persons as caring uh, process of nursing, okay? And so there are three uh, or four components, I would say. So I have technological knowing, uh, mutual designing, and participative engaging. And then you have the patient, client, or person, okay? Uh, but I would prefer, of course, person being nursed, okay? Uh, one comment, though, uh, I presented this, and they said, "Why is the person quite small?" And I didn't even pay attention to that, to that, to the structural uh, representation. But I think uh, it makes sense to make it probably the same uh, or bigger, and then the designing and all those elements of of uh, the process to be smaller, maybe because it is you know, the patient is the is the focus of nursing, but. I'll revisit that and see uh, how it can it can be uh, represented again. So uh, the nursing encounter, right? If you notice those three 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 spheres in the middle, 
So this is what I call the nursing encounter. The nursing encounter is, all, is where all nursing occurs, right? So uh, while this is the tech, this is the UTD, right? Um, it's the nursing encounter is where all nursing occurs. It's called, it's also the space of togetherness, okay? Because that is where your nursing, that is when uh, your nursing uh, encounter can happen, okay? It's the space of togetherness, right? So this is the universal technological domain, and these are the, your four um, aspects. And this is actually your uh, knowing persons as caring process of nursing. Okay. All right. So um, technology, I, I like to reemphasize this, knowing persons as caring is the process of nursing. Guided by technological knowing, the nurse enters the other person's world with technologies of care that magnifies aspect of the person that require knowing. Magnifies, for example, that's what technology does, right? Uh, we don't really, we cannot see, right? We cannot feel what is blood pressure, right? So we need a, an instrument to, to tell us what is, what is the blood pressure. We don't just say high blood pressure, low blood pressure, because it doesn't mean anything. Okay. We need numbers to show that. And so we had this Figma manometer, all right? And so that instrument uh, magnifies or allow us to know the person more fully as person. So that's why we use these instruments. Art is another one. Okay. Art also allow, uh, allows us to know the person more fully as person. That's why we use uh, the smileys, all right? Because uh, for pain, pain identification, we use those, okay? Because a facial grimace is different, all right? So facial grimace may mean, uh, will mean pain, right? And so we have to have a way by which people can understand, especially those who cannot voice, okay, or articulate what it is that they are feeling or may have a different language than us. So we need some, some way to communicate with them. So it's still technological knowing, okay? Since the person energetically changes moment to moment, technological knowing of persons is a continuous and never ending process. That's why you have the Mobius. Okay, so the Mobius, okay, so uh, it's very important. Mutual designing, both the nurse and the one nurse together strategize mutually satisfying nursing care processes that is creative and responsive to the patient's desire to live meaningful life, okay? So I still, now I still use patient, okay? <laughs> to the person's desire to live a meaningful life. That is what we're aiming for. Uh, we don't, we refrain from using the word cure, all right? because that's not our, our purview, right? We, it's, it's not our uh, focus from this theoretical perspective. It's more uh, towards affirming, celebrating, and supporting the person's uh, uh, intent to live a meaningful life. Okay? What is meaningful to this person? That is what, you, what we want to understand, okay? All right, okay, so um, I will show you later on as one of the later slides, what do I mean by this, okay? Living a meaningful life, okay? So I hope uh, you can look at that video and see later on what is this. Participative engaging is a simultaneous engagement of conjoint activities which are crucial to knowing persons as caring. The dominating activity is alternating rhythms between designing, participative engaging, and technological knowing. Continuous technological knowing and designing with particular engagement is reflective of the recursive process of knowing persons. Recursive, not circuitous, okay? Circuitous is one point, it goes back to the same point. That's circuitous, right? But recursive is from one point, it goes to another point, it goes to another point, okay? So it's, that's why it's called recursive, okay? All right. So this is just to show. Um, so this is an example of a, uh, I would say, a situation, okay? a nursing situation, where we can we can illustrate what um, what is knowing persons as caring. So this is a poem. Uh, uh, let me read this uh, quickly. Right. So did you see nurse that you can know me? The part that is me, my mind and soul is in my eyes. These tubes that are everywhere, that is not me. The one in my throat is the worst of all. Now my whole being, the essence of me, I must reflect through my eyes, from my hands, sorry. But they are tied down. But you realize that it, it is uncomfortable for me or through my eyes and you do not notice them. You speak to me and look at the tubes, right? Very, very common uh, 
uh, activity, right? Don't you know my thoughts are all over your face? Don't you realize your thoughts are on your face, in your touch, and your tone of voice? I wrote a request on paper and you said, I'll take care of it for you. But your tone said, why can't this woman do anything for herself? Right? You positioned your hand to count my pulse, but I can say you touched me. You wouldn't hold my hand that I may touch you. Don't you see, nurse, that you can know me? I'm not a chart or tubes of medication, monitors or all the other things you look at so intensely. I'm more than that. I'm scared. Just look in my eyes. Right? So this is now the relationship between the nurse and the person being nursed. And that is illustrated by the moving uh, uh, activity in that video. Okay? So I just, I just used a, a music okay, to give it more uh aesthetic expression so but that is just to show uh the unpredictability of the relationship between the nurse and the person being nursed okay. so um okay let me see another example okay which is more technology technology focused this um this uh one of my patients requested a new iv on her opposite arm even though the one she has, she had was safely infusing her IV fluids. I was extremely busy, but I knew that her IV would not get changed until much later, if at all. A shift change was occurring and she did not have veins that were easily accessed. I requested for the vein finder and successfully inserted a new IV. My patient was so happy and told me that no one else had given, had been able to get a vein on the first try. It seemed like a simple task, but it made such a difference to her. I can appreciate that through competent use of the viewfinder instrument, I was able to allow my patient to use her dominant hand instead of limiting her range of motion because of the IV location. So uh, just to explain how you can, you can uh, analyze the, the, the situation to, to look at the three processes of nursing, okay? uh, of knowing persons as caring. So she was able to live a more whole and meaningful life through the use of her dominant hand. This was simple an act, but so moment changing for her and also for me. So the technological knowing, which is competence in using the viewfinder and mutual designing shared relationship during the IV insertion were expressions of mutual appreciation of a life. Uh, okay. Of a life, uh, wait, wait. <laughs> I cannot see anymore. Uh, yeah sent a question. Then a shared relationship during the IVs were expressions of mutual uh, relationship, I think. Okay. So anyway, okay. So what paroxysms will humans have in the future? So you asked the question, so will we be different uh, beings in the future? I would say yes, right? Because we will be growing. Okay. Um, Maybe we will lose our our uh, some of our fingers later on, okay? Because we only use the thumb, okay? With our computers, okay? We use a PlayStation. You only use this. Or we may not be able to walk as much later on because we don't really move anymore, right? Um, but anyway, that's far fetched. Maybe for some, but um, we have to re remember uh, the functionality, okay? Of of our of our person. Is important, so we have to use them. Um, so, what the question is: What is so important about humans? Well, remember, human beings are the focus of our nursing. Okay, so we need to understand who they are as persons, okay, as caring persons, for that matter. So, the greatest gift of humans is that they wish for things that do not exist. <laughs> Only humans can believe in what is not actual, right? And so, we have the we have mysticism. Okay, we are amazed by ideas. Uh, that are out there because there are many things in the world that we cannot explain, okay? And so we listen, we try to understand what it is that is um, understandable, okay? Which oftentimes limits our ways of revealing that which is true. And so we create art, we have technology, okay? To, to make us understand what it is. So, um, focusing on research, right? So when we when we use the theory of technological competency as caring in nursing, we study nursing phenomena, right? We don't study healthcare phenomena. We don't study physiological phenomena, anatomical phenomena, nutrition, or whatever phenomena out there. 
we study nursing phenomena. And, and this theory, we study care, caring for um, a phenomena, okay? Caring for persons who have technologies, right? So for example, there are persons with, um, with uh, pacemakers, right? Um, bioengineered pancreas, right? Artificial legs, artificial arms, all those things that live with, all those things who live with technologies, what is it like to care for them, okay? So we study that, that their experiences so that we can come to know and understand who they are as caring persons, okay? So the other one would be lived experiences of being cared for. What is it like to have technologies, okay? What is it like being cared for with technologies? What is it like for a person lying in the, in the intensive care unit, right? With all these technologies buzzing and uh, all this, uh, all this uh, activities going on and there, there's nothing much that you can do because you're, you're being cared for by these technologies. What is it like, okay? Should we, should we want to know what it is like so that we can participate in their care? I think that's a very good question, right? We want to know so that we can know what is it like so that we can, we can care for them more fully as caring persons. Cloning and bionic parts and the experience of being with, right? So uh, the, 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 the idea of uh, human beings having um, extra or technological parts, we have to understand what it is like. Okay, to have, to have these parts, right? Uh, there are many uh, human beings that now actually they are cybernetic organisms already. Why? Because they have they cannot live without these technologies, right? So cybernetic organisms or cyborgs, right? Design and development of instruments to measure technological competency as caring in nursing. So uh, Dr. Tanioka, uh, Tetsuya Tanioka, Tanioka of uh, Tokushima University and I and his laboratory, we have been uh, developing uh, instruments right, to measure technological competency as caring in nursing, both from a nursing, uh, nursing practice perspective and both from a patient care uh, perspective. Right? So um, this is, this is a, a, it to correspond to the idea of caring for and being cared for. So uh, this has been, uh, there are probably about four or five instruments out there now. Right. So if you want, you can always get in touch with him. Okay. Uh, I will say uh, you have get, get in touch with him because I'm now retired. <laughs> so, okay. So, but the challenge is there. Right. Uh, so also he directs the Rosano Loxin Institute. And by the way, if I may, uh, we have the fourth international conference uh, in December and it's virtual. So I hope you would, you would submit, um, abstracts so that we can have a more uh, a more informed uh, uh, international conference okay so think about that very seriously is the Rosano Luxin Institute fourth international uh, conference okay so genetics and the future of humans as post humans okay so well that's why I said uh, what's the what's the big deal about being human well okay we are growing in our being human okay so uh, we may have, I don't know why, but uh, maybe this is a legitimate question. Why do we want to live forever? Okay. And you will say, no, I don't think I want to live forever. Then why do you take, why do you exercise? Why do you go to the gym? Why do you have to uh, eat this healthy food for what? To keep healthy? Why do you want to keep healthy? Because you want to live longer, right? Hopefully, you know, long enough to get all the diseases, right? That's what they say. Uh, <laughs> uh, the average age some years ago was 47. So, so I am 20 years past that, okay? So 21 years past that, uh, that um, average age, okay? So um, the, the, the hope is that we will have a healthy, healthy life until we, until we croak, okay? Until we die, all right? Uh, I hate the idea that I will be, you know, dependent on, on technologies, right? Uh, because even though I love technology, you know, but then the idea is, what is it like to live with these technologies, right? Okay. Anyway, so burn, burnout uh, phenomenon, okay? Because that's why we need to create technologies in order to facilitate uh, nursing, nursing, uh, nursing care. Okay. So let's let's do that. And so this brings back to the the original question I asked: Can humanoid nurse robots replace human nurses? Okay. Or what will be the role of 
uh, humanoid robots or healthcare robots for that matter, right? Should they dominate nursing a nursing practice or should they be subservient to the nurses, okay? Will they be slaves or will they be our superiors, right? Okay, so we have to think very carefully about what are these technologies because we always say, oh, the, the, uh, our computers actually, our, um, and the internet, everything, and information is very accessible, right? So they have all these things available, right? And what the idea is that people would say, oh, you know, computers and all these technologies are dependent on human beings. Yes, we now have, we now have computers that may be able to replicate itself, right? Nanotechnologies, for example, right? So we have to be careful when we create these technologies, right? So anyway, uh, nursing administration calls to care for nurses in high-tech environments. The responsibility of the nurse administrator in order to facilitate the care of persons, right? Uh, in, in their own units. How will, how will this ad administrator um, uh, staff your nursing care at unit area, right? Or unit or your area of care? Okay, that's, that's the, that's a big question. In order for, for to, to be a, a, a caring nurse administrator, how can you uh, uh, staff your, your unit, right? So that the nurses will be able to participate in the care for persons, right? Because if there are too many patients, right? Too many persons under their care, so they become a bit, they will have burnout, right? So what are you going to do as a nurse administrator, right? And the universality of technology, Technological competency as caring in varying nursing settings. Okay, so varying nursing settings is very important simply because technology is everywhere and they will always, technology will stay, okay, and it will never go away, all right? So, but okay. Um, so, these are the five emergent concerns in gendering techno technological competence caring in nursing, future research foresight. I mentioned this being cared for and caring for technologies, the universal technological domain. And these are three theories that are now uh, being developed. Actually, uh, Tetsuya Tanioka's uh, um, theory of uh, theory of uh, a transactive relationship theory of nursing, okay, uh, the threaten, right, has been has been uh, published. As well as the as the MIRTH M I R T H by Osaka, or the it focuses on the intermediary role of human beings in 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 robot and healthcare robot and human uh, relationships. Okay, so they need that she she has um, uh, theorized the 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 role of of uh, human beings in this relationship. So she called it the MIRTH, the model for uh, something. Uh, Anyway, it's a relationship, an intermediary role of the nurse, all right? And then you have human technology attachment by Ito. Not yet. It's being still continuously developed. Um, Hiro Kazui Ito worked with me. Uh, we, be, we belong to the same department. And I, this is really a, a, a good theory to, I hope she, he, will, he will get this done soon. It's, it's, it answers the question about um, why are we attached to technology? Um, we wake up in the morning. The first thing you touch is not your is not your wife or you know your 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 significant other, but your cell phone. Okay, why? Right. So we are attached. What happens? What happens if you lose or misplace your cell phone? Oh, your heart skips a bit. Okay. Uh, so many things. So we are attached to these technologies, right? Not only machine technologies, but any technology for that matter. Okay. Machine learning and digital medicine. Okay, machine learning. Um, we have um, uh, when we do X-ray uh, uh, reading, uh, we call this the image uh, image sciences. Okay, this is very important. So we used to have a radiographer, uh, radiologist read X-rays. Now the machine can read it, and all that the radiologist will do is uh, confirm that it is right, okay? because it is now uh, that this machine can learn. What are the common things that needs to be uh, 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 viewed? Okay, so blurring the similarities between human persons and anthropomorphic intelligent machines. Okay, the humanoid nurse robots. Okay, we are developing this. Okay, and so anthropomorphic. Okay, uh, that's a that's a good um, tongue twister, I think. Okay. Anthropomorphic. Okay, so um, it's important for us to understand that that is what is so.
Um, this is uh, a projection by Tetsuya uh, Taneoka. Uh, by we are now in the uh, we're still here. Okay, level one healthcare robot in 2020. So we're looking at uh, humanoid nurse robots in 2050. So maybe 30 years from now we may have. But what kind of healthcare humanoid nurse robots will we have? And uh, you cannot say, oh, that will never happen because it is happening. Okay, it may not be. Uh, the same as, as what we envision a humanoid nurse robots will be, right? but it may be different. So what happens beyond, uh, beyond uh, being human, right? So maybe 26, of course, I will not be alive. It's your responsibility now. So uh, think about that very seriously. And the important thing to consider is this. If nursing practice is simply doing, okay, i.e. completion of tasks, then humanoid nurse robots or healthy robots can practice nursing in more efficient, precise, and predictable ways, right? So you have to think about that. So what is nursing? You have to go back to the ontology of nursing again, okay? Because if we cannot say, oh, it will never happen again, but what is it that is nursing? Okay, we need to understand what is it that is nursing. And you cannot say, oh, the computers will not be as good. We now have quantum computers, okay? And then we also have affective computers. We say, oh, the expressions of, of these robots will not be, oh, you can watch in YouTube. You have Grace, for example, okay? It's now a higher version of Sophia, right? So they're now able to do uh, many things, okay? So what is the heart of the machine, right? So maybe, right? These are things that we need to consider, okay? All right, these are some of the publications. Um, I just uh, made a collage of all those titles. Uh, there are more coming. So where are we going, okay? Especially with the theory. At some point during our 13.8 billion years of cosmic history, something beautiful happened. Information processing got so intelligent that life forms became conscious. So important thing to consider is consciousness, our human consciousness. Our universe has now awoken, becoming aware of itself. I regard it a triumph that we, who are ourselves mere stardust, have come to such a detailed understanding of the universe in which we live. Okay, Stephen Hawking. Okay, so um, these are some of the things that we need to understand. So it's a, it's a combination of physics and 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 nursing and, and engineering, right? And robotics, for example. We have to move. Have you heard of nurse engineers? Right. It is now a specialization because of the advent of healthcare robots. Okay, so it is now a specialization in nursing. Okay. Happen.
Well, thank you very much. I need, um, that video um, is available on YouTube, so you can watch it again. And it, it makes you feel, you know, what is it like for the other person? The other person is on the other side, right? So you need to understand when they are, uh, when they present to you, uh, we, have to, we have to reconsider who is this person uh, who participates in their care. Okay? So uh, all these technological competencies as caring perspective will come into uh, perspective as well. Okay, so thank you very much, uh, Ria. I think we're ready for <laughs> uh, any questions or clarifications perhaps. Yes, thank you very much for the discussion, Dr. Um, Nilo. Uh, your passion for nursing is contagious. I appreciate you. how you gave this lecture with such enthusiasm, and I'm um, really motivated to study this theory further and promote its use. Okay, so now let's move on to our open forum. The questions will be coming from our online participants or viewers. We encourage you to send in your questions via the chat box sections of the UPOU um, Network's website and the UPOU Network's Facebook page. All right, so let's start with our open forum with question number one. So there's a message. I like this question because um, you actually highlighted being present and uh, knowing people and then compassion and then burnout doc. So, you know, these are indeed concepts related to this question. So thank you so much for your discussion. This was refreshing because it involves the use of technology, a very important 21st century skill. I would like to ask if this theory can be combined with other variables such as mental health. Mm. Uh, yes, okay. Um, but mental health will always involve uh, uh, technology as well, right? And so in order for you to know the person more fully, you can, you can see um, technology is not machine technology. Okay, remember, technology is anything that makes things efficient. Even as a person, I know, I know a person, persons are technologies. No, okay. So it becomes, it becomes a, a, a questionable, uh, questionable question because uh, of that idea. How can a person be a technology? But the point is, is, is the concept of technology that is, that is important, right? So when you use the way you ask the questions, if, you, if you're doing your processing, okay? I think we use the word process recording or something or um, in, in the way you practice uh, mental health uh, activities, you can use technological competency as caring in nursing. Simply, simply identify what kind of technology you are, you are using. Again, technology as, as uh, anything that makes things efficient, okay? So mental health, activities you can you can use um uh, you psychometric testing for example or or mm -hmm. how, well, however it is that you that you are going to to measure uh rorschach or whatever it is that you use in mental health i'm not a mental health practitioner but i think you can but that's probably a good question in the future you know uh, if you if you intend to, to really use that as a, as, a, uh, as an instrument to measure you can you can use it as well it will be very interesting for me to know what you find out. Thank you. Thank you, Doc. All right, so we have another question here. So the audience said that, I agree nurses should know and understand technology. Unfortunately, senior nurses do not welcome this as much as, as, much as they are thinking that this is just an added burden, burden for them. How mm. can we address this problem? Okay. Well, we have to make them understand okay, mm -hmm. that technology is not, is not an added burden. Okay? They have to realize that the technology uh, allows them to know the person more fully as a person. It's a, it's, it's yes. a, it's a philosophical perspective. Uh, of course, you cannot tell them, oh, is this a philosophical perspective? You have to understand technology. No, mm -hmm. you have to understand that. How does technology facilitate their, their nursing? Okay? That's, the, that's, the, that's the basic question. How can I, as nurse, facilitate um, uh, my nursing using technology? Right now, I don't know what what they mean by it's an added burden. Is it is it the use of computers? Is it the use of um, what, what what other technologies out there? Um, but the idea is to make things efficient. Okay, if it is not and if it is not used uh, to make things. Um, 
I would say if, if technology is not used to make things efficient, then it, it does not, it does not uh, provide the opportunity for the nurse to really understand that the, the technology is useful. Okay? And that's probably where the, the, uh, the misunderstanding, I'll just call it a misunderstanding of the use of technology. They need to understand that with this technology, it makes their, their nursing uh, more efficient. Okay, so uh, an added burden, uh, maybe maybe you can study, make a survey if it does really, uh, if it really does uh, become a, a burden to, to, uh, to nurses and what kind of technology is burdensome, for example, right? So then we come to realize that perhaps this kind of, um, this kind of technology does not serve uh, the person well. So uh, we, we, can, we, can, we can revisit that. Uh, I'm just wondering what kind of technology is, is considered a burden, right? Um, when, every, when I think most technologies that are out there are actually, um, are actually used to, to make things efficient. So mm -hmm. I, I wonder what it is. I'm not sure what, what they're thinking. So if you yes, get a chance, yeah. whoever asked that question, uh, let me know what kind of technology are you thinking about okay? or right. has, been, has been used. Yes, I am actually thinking about the training they have to undergo to learn how to uh, use certain I, technology. Parang yun po yung, yeah, that's what I I'm think thinking. That, no? I think the idea of technology is computer, the use of computers, say, um, um, what I always say, okay, the patient care systems, right? Mm -hmm. uh, computer, computer, computerizing. Uh, patient patient care systems, right? mm -hmm. and that if it is not perceived as as, as a way to to, uh, to to help the person understand what is needed by the by, by, by this patient, then it becomes a burden. Okay? So I think it's computers. That's that's uh, because you have to relearn uh, what you've been doing. It's easier perhaps to write, and easier to do the checklist, you know. But um, it will. Uh, Actually, we have to revisit the idea of the use of technology in healthcare because mm -hmm. um, if uh, if we if we if, if it only if it is not if it is not received as a way to facilitate, then you know it does not it doesn't make sense. Okay, yeah. to have it. Okay, like the question of um, we should should we have uh, healthcare robots in in third world country? Right? In third world countries, for example, well, why do we need healthcare robots in third world countries? When there are so many human resources, right? So maybe not. Okay, it's just it's just uh, available out there. So you know, if you if you really intend to to if there is a need, then perhaps you can you can probably uh, use the healthcare robots in your in third world countries. Okay, this was actually asked by a person when I presented this in in Indonesia. So uh, I said, well, there's so many nurses in Indonesia. Why do we need healthcare robots? It's a good question. Maybe you don't need. Right. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Thank you, Doc. This is a comment I think that's contrary to the to the technology being a burden. I like what you said about technology. This is something that makes things efficient. I will try to use this theory on our electronic medical records here in Saudi oh. for my study. So, that's right. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, and that's a that's a good thing. Actually, um, in in um, in Japan, we uh, we already have this. Um, uh, especially for those who ask for, for the person who asked about mental health, we mm -hmm. have um, Dr. Tanioka actually has, uh, I think it's part of her, his research studies, funded research study. Uh, he has this PSYCOM, psychometric uh, medical record, something. It's called PSYCOMs. Um, and it, but of course, it's in Japanese. So <laughs> um, I, I don't know if he had the chance to translate it into English, but it's a way uh, that the purpose of the PSYCOMs was for all. Um, all healthcare practitioners who care for persons who have uh, psychiatric problems to contribute to, to, to arrive at a, a, a diagnosis, to arrive at a plan of care, so that there is there's uh, a much, much like the SOAP uh, um, uh, documentation before, right? So you everyone contributes uh, from the nurse to the physician to the to the um, uh, psychiatrist, right? So uh, he was able to develop this, and so uh, the, the the technology is available. But uh, again, it's in Japanese. Then uh, Hirokazu Ito also um, 
developed the, uh, he called it the SINAX, Psychiatric Nursing Assessment Classification System, right? So um, it's also a way uh, to, to, to predict, uh, 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 say, a diagnosis, right, and care for persons uh, using, I think she used the NANDA for that. Actually. But of course, again, it's in Japanese, so I'm, I'm sorry. Uh, they, I don't think they had a chance to really um, uh, translate it into English yet. So, okay. Yeah, we have um, an, uh, another question here, but it's related to our second question with what is uh, your message to those nurses who are still resistant to change, <laughs> especially with the integration of technology in care? Hmm. All right. Uh, um, I think the the, the idea uh, there is really no. I would say uh, how how is technology introduced into the system? Okay, um, is there a need for this technology? Right now, who has found the need for this technology? So perhaps uh, education is most important. Okay, educate educate the nurses. Right. And, and so um, it does not become a burden. It does not become something that, that makes them inefficient. Uh, remember, for example, senior nurses are actually expert nurses. They're expert in their own practice of nursing. You introduce something new, they now become a beginner, all right? So the beginner, uh, I remember a story. Uh, this was when, when I presented in, um, in uh, Doha in Qatar. So one of the presenters actually actually de de described this uh, as the as the what was what was happening. So they introduced. I think it it was in Hamad a Medical Center or maybe not. Um, they presented this new um, uh, computerization to to uh, to the nursing to the nursing systems, and all those expert nurses had to had to undergo the whole. Uh, I think uh, 30 days or you know 40 days of, of uh, education and training, you know, clicking these computers and fi finding whatever it is that they need to find, so 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 and so. And after after so many days, uh, so it was now to go live, okay. And when they when they started this, one or two or three nurses were were uh, were in were on duty, and this, this and the trainer actually saw them crying. Okay, they were crying because they did not know what to do. Okay, so now their expertise has, has been put into the back back burner or 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 in the back door. Let's put it that way. And now they have to learn something new, and they did not re they did not find it valuable. One, a second, uh, there the, the they they probably thought that the that the the organization or the hospital institution. It's not finding their their expertise as valuable as these computers are. So it's I think it's all about education. Okay, mm -hmm. we need to educate them and 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 make sure that um, it's, it's just like orientation programs. We cannot say orientation is only three weeks. Now some people may be may be fast learners. Right? Some people may be slow learners. So we have to really uh, revisit the idea of um, education and learning. Okay. So uh, hopefully um, we need to understand uh, the, the, the bottom line, I would say, is that these technologies are used to know persons more fully as person. Okay? It is not to make, to make nurses stay in the nurse's station and use Facebook. Okay? Right? So we should not, uh, it's, it's more time for the patients. That's, that's the idea. Okay? So that you will, you'll be able to care for the person more fully as person, not to give you more time to, to talk, to call, to whatever, uh, because now you have done your, your checklist, you have done all those things, right? Uh, but it is to, to help you understand the patient more fully, visit your patient, give, it, give them more time, okay? So that you're able to know them as persons, who they are as persons, and what their, their priorities are, right? But of course, it's only as good as I say it, right? Um, some people say, well, you know, it's good theoretically, but in practice, you can still see a lot of nurses, you know, after they do their bed baths and whatever assessments, so on some medications, so they sit at the nurse station or stay in the lounge mm -hmm. and, and do, you know, their Facebook, okay, or call <laughs> or something. Okay? Uh, you know, it's a reality and depends on what it is that, um, that our 
our uh, personal, uh, I would say, our person, who, who we are as person and as nurses. Okay? We, we should understand who we are. And no one else should be watching us. We are professionals. No one, no, mm -hmm. no one needs to watch us and do our, our practice. Okay. Thank you, Doc. Uh, we have another um, question here from our YouTube channel from Mam um, Leona Paula Mahalintal, um, one of our FICs. Thank you for a wonderful session, Dr. Loxin. It is always inspiring to learn from you. How can we further educate our nurses to strike a balance between technological competency and caring? Um, I, I think that education is, is, is my answer to that. Um, to strike a balance, um, we, may, may we have, we, for those who are not able to, who are not very familiar with these technologies, right? we should, be, we should, we should uh, educate. That's that's the that's the bottom line. Um, newer nurses, right? New, uh, newer nurses, uh, probably the see the millennials. I, I get confused now, right? Uh, are very are very are very savvy when it comes to technology. They grew up with technologies, while the older persons like me, right? We did not grow up with technologies, right? So uh, we need to understand what it is, okay? Uh, and so we have to strike a a a, a balancing act. Administrators. This is where your 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 job is going to be. You cannot just shove uh, or throw the the new nurse to a system that that uh, that is not as as demanding as your as what they know as far as technology is concerned because they will be frustrated. Okay, they will be complaining. Okay, because that is not how they they grew up in their practice of nursing. And then an older person will become threatened. Right. Because now here comes these nurses who are very uh, technology savvy, and now their expertise is now is not being understood as much as they, they expect these new nurses to be. And so there is that, um, uh, I would say, uh, not not a, a fear, right, but a scare, perhaps, right, of what it is that is going to happen in my practice uh, setting. So we need to we need we need education, and we cannot we cannot just ignore. This, this phenomenon. It is a phenomenon uh, that we need to really uh, reassess and refocus because our, our, who is going to be the loser? It's, it's the patient. It's the person being nursed who will be the loser. Okay. So we need to revisit that. So it's a challenge to the nurse administrators, actually. All right. Thank you, Doc. Uh, next question. I'd like to raise a question linked to gender. I am just wondering because nursing is dominated by females and technology is dominated by males. Will there be any impact of this on the technological knowing, designing, and participatory engaging concepts? Mm. Uh, no. Okay. It's basically it's basically a no uh, answer. Uh, while it is true, perhaps that uh, women not females, because we have female dogs, female cats, and female cows, right? But when we refer to women, uh, uh, the gender, we say women, right? And to men as men, okay? Not male, okay? So uh, it's, a, it's a revisiting uh, for, the, for the right term, if you like to put it that way. So mm -hmm. for women, uh, while when you say dominant or dominating the, the nursing profession, uh, it's true, right? But I don't think it's it's going to impact the, the way uh, technology is being used in order to know persons more fully as a person. Mm -hmm. Simply because uh, even today, uh, computerization, it doesn't matter whether you are using a, a computer. Right? A, a computer doesn't say, oh, this is only for, for women or this is only good for men. Right? While, while there is a, 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 um, a perspective that... Um, men men uh, are more uh, technology savvy uh, i don't think it's going to impact uh, how um, how we express how we practice uh, technological knowing uh, mutual designing and participative engaging okay if we look at persons more fully as persons okay yeah. uh, then that is what we should be we, we should be focusing on and the technology is simply i'd like to say simply used to know the person more fully as person, so it doesn't matter whether uh, the person is a woman or a man. Okay, mm -hmm. meaning the practitioner. Okay, so 
I don't think. I, I think it's, um, uh, it's, I don't know if it's just still like that. So gender neutral is probably how you practice um, uh, using uh, uh, technological competency as caring in nursing uh, theory. Um, when you study uh, phenomena that are gender or gender based, for example, what is it like to deliver a stillborn baby? Uh, you cannot you cannot have that from a man, right? Because so far men do not deliver uh, children yet. Okay, maybe in the future with technology, you may have you may be, uh, men may be able to deliver, but yeah, no, uh, so things like this are are dependent upon what is available as far as technology is concerned. And it is, this becomes a gender, gender-based uh, uh, experiencing, okay? So um, uh, the technology, and I think um, Margaret, Margaret Sandilovsky studied uh, the influence of technology, technology dependency, uh, her phenomenon. For example, why do, why do obstetricians use uh, stirrups uh, to deliver babies, right? Uh, did you know that that is very uncomfortable? Those those who have uh, delivered babies, for example, in, in 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 hospital delivery rooms, they put your your two feet up, and you can hardly push. So you ask the question, why why is it this way? And it is this particular technology is only for the obstetrician. It has nothing to do with uh, the 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 person who is going to deliver the baby. It's not it has nothing to do with the mother, right? But it's for the obstetrician so that they can see very well, right? Mm. That's the that's the that's the reason. Okay, so that's gender-based uh, technology, right? So uh, we have to we have to uh, visit those. Okay, so that nowadays we don't really use. I mean, delivering babies at home, okay, birthing centers, okay, is now again promoted because of that idea that in fact, and other than the the, the use of technologies, so. Uh, we need, we need to visit the idea of uh, uh, technology as uh, as having gender bias kind of thing. Okay. okay, thank you for that. Another question. I believe the theory is very helpful. Um, however, what makes it comp this complicated is the fact that a person is always changing this never ending process. Please suggest ways on how we can deal with this as nurses. Oh. Well, you know, um, just just imagine yourself as not changing. Uh, do you really want to not change, right? Uh, we always change, right? And so we have to understand that persons change from moment to moment, okay? And so, um, because human beings are unpredictable, uh, we know that, okay? And I hope we change, all right? Because if we don't, well, I don't think you would like to remain three years old. I mean, I'm, not, I'm just using that as a... As a Example uh, activities um, um, uh, the 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 world change and we have to change with the times otherwise we become obsolete right and so the challenge this is actually the challenge for nursing understanding the person as always changing so we cannot say I already know the person right oh I already know uh, uh, how to care for a person with diabetes right that's not really we should not have that kind of perspective. Because, because a person's change from moment to moment, they're always changing. So it's always a challenge for the nurse to know the person more fully a scary person. Okay, so that's, that's, the, that's the, uh, the answer to that question. It's not, it's not a problem. It's, it's a, uh, I would say it's a solution kind of, because that's the way we practice. That's a good way to practice nursing because we know that human beings are changing uh, always changing, so we should always be on our toes. Okay, so if we if we are always on our toes, that means we keep our our uh, belief that this person is going to grow in their own time and in his own way. So it's 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 it's, it's actually beautiful to know that this person is changing. Yes, I agree. Thank you, um, Doc. Uh, we have a comment here. So it says, this is a modern theory of nursing. Thank you very much for sharing this. Okay, let me just check for another question. So, okay, so this one, 
I think everyone is excited to hear the answer for this. Please teach us how to assert ourselves as nurses. You said that we should not be slaves, but there are so many patients and even doctors who are still treating us as such. Okay, uh, I think you got you, you missed some of the aspects before the word slave. All right, um, it is the use of technology as slave or the use of technology as superiors. Right, so. That's that's the that's the uh, context of what my statement. It is not nurses being used as being perceived as slaves. Right? That's a different perspective. That's that's more a professional uh, uh, issue. Right? Mm -hmm. But to to just put my two cents uh, to it. Okay, I would say um, if we if we establish competency, technological competency. Uh, as, as a way of practicing nursing, okay? technological competency as caring in nursing, we now own our practice of nursing. Okay? However, if we, allow, if we allow our nursing to simply be following physicians' orders, right? so we become kind of their slaves okay? because we cannot do anything other than what they want us to do. If we do something that's not within their realm, then we become we, we are we are um, uh, it, it, we we are punished. Okay, uh, there's penalty for not following their orders. That is not what nursing is. Okay, we have our own body of knowledge, and that should that should be that should be the focus of our understanding of how we're going to practice nursing. And hopefully, this theory can allow us to to move higher into, into a level that is. Uh, kind of significant to the practice of nursing. We, although our focus of, of practice is the person uh, or person being nursed, and similarly physicians also do the same. We have a different focus. Okay, it's 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 patient it's human uh, human understanding of the person uh, as always whole and complete in the moment. It's not it's not the way they practice nursing. It's, it's not the way they practice medicine. That's why we have to move away from that practice of medicine uh, that we used to use, right? Uh, we had to do that 60 years ago. That's why I mentioned earlier, uh, that was a, that's, that's medical practice is of assessment uh, um, and then uh, creating an intervention and then implementing the, the, the intervention and then evaluating. That's, that's based on medical practice. That's what they do, physical assessment, EPA, right? In inspection, palpation, percussion, auscultation. That's physical diagnosis. And then you have medications, you have treatments, and then evaluation. If you look at nursing, uh, the nursing process of assessment, planning, intervention, evaluation, it's similar. And that was because it had to happen at that time. I'm not saying it shouldn't have been, right? But at that time, it was the, it was the most uh, logical way to study uh, how, we're going to, how we're going to elevate our practice of nursing. What was the most popular um, profession that was similar to nursing. It was only medicine. And in fact, we studied nursing, quote, under, uh, under physicians, right? Because they gave us things that they did not, they probably did not want us to, they didn't want us to follow. So they give, okay, you nurses, you can do this, you can do this. So they become, they become the lords, right? Because our practice is based on what they, they practice. Right? But if we have our own practice perspective, which I hope uh, we, we, we need, we, we should have by now, right? Then we, we have to revisit the idea. Now, again, in much how can we do that in hospital settings precisely, right? Mm -hmm. right? Remember, we're talking about hospital nursing only, okay? Now, uh, it's also, it's partly our fault, okay? Because that is how we socialize students. The first clinical experience that nurse, that students have is the hospital. So we now expose them to what is a nurse, right? Mm -hmm. A nurse who is, who is following physician's orders, right? So it's a different yeah. perspective. We need supposed to be the nurse as an autonomous practitioner, right? How are we going to do that? Okay, so we have to revisit the idea of what nurses should and ought to be doing, okay, in our, in our practice perspective. But then I know some of you would say, how are we going to do that? Well, that becomes an educational uh, curriculum process, right? So autonomous, autonomous institutions may be able to revisit that idea, okay? Uh, because they're now, they're now uh, being under the, the chair is, is a, a big challenge, okay? So when they give you the blueprint, it doesn't mean 
uh, it's the it's the it's the model uh, it, yeah, it's a blueprint then you can you can still innovate okay mm -hmm. so what do the features of nursing should be creativity in imagination and innovation okay so that's mm -hmm. these are the three things and the focus of nursing should be health promotion early intervention and a health promotion illness prevention and early intervention okay so no one can question what is it mm -hmm. that our nursing is okay if nursing is following physicians' orders, well, God forbid, okay, uh, then we will all remain under hospital administration. Okay, so you have to, we have to practice outside uh, the hospital. Um, so if we do health promotion, illness prevention, and early intervention, how are we going to do that, and where? Right. So the person does not get sick, right? But, but we know the person gets sick. So the person who gets sick can go to the hospital, okay? So when they get cured, then they go back to the, to the community. And so how are, we going to, how are we going to practice nursing, okay? Uh, so that they do not get sick. So that's what, what nurses can ought to do, right? That's another part of nursing. Okay? It's not all hospital nursing for that matter. Of course, maybe if that is the kind of nursing you're going to have, or, or, yeah, you may not be able to go to America or you may not be able to go to Saudi Arabia or UK, all right? But you'll be able to practice and care for persons in the Philippines or care for Filipinos so that they will not get sick, okay? So um, anyway, that's just another, another perspective, okay? So that brings us to the idea of um, uh, should we be slaves? Uh, what can we do to to physician to, to nurses who, who think we should be practicing under physicians' orders? So things like that. And it's a very long answer. I hope I answered your question. Whoever asked that question. <laughs> All right. Thank you so much for that, Doctor uh, Luxin. Uh, this is. I think it will be our last question for the day. And um, this was personally. Um, Mess, uh, uh, someone personally messaged me to deliver this message. So my sister is here with me watching. She is not a nurse, but very interested in the theory discussed. Okay. Is it possible to use technological knowing, mutual designing, and participative engaging and communication instead of caring? Sure. Yeah. Okay. Find, find, find a way. All right. Um, and that's one thing I'd like to challenge everyone. Okay. I know it says technological competence as caring in nursing. All right. So you can say technological competence as caring in uh, engineering or in physical therapy, in whatever it is that you would like. Mm -hmm. And I'd appreciate it very much. That is the only way by which uh, the theory can grow. Right. And, okay. and I hope uh, uh, otherwise the theory will die a natural death. Okay. <laughs> If, it's, if it is not critiqued, all right, if it is not used, it will die, right? Just like uh, Ida Orlando's uh, theory, right? Who, who uses Ida Orlando's theory? No one, okay? Right? So um, not, no one that I know, for example, it's only good for the books, okay? So we need to really have uh, opportunities and then think of how you can do it. And that's a challenge, actually. You don't even need my permission, right? Uh, just get the uh, takeaway, whatever it is that you, you can use, especially the assumptions of the theory mm -hmm. and see how it can, it can um, move your, your, your intent because the focus is that uh, persons are caring by virtue of their humanness, right? So wherever and whenever that occurs, that's the important thing. All right. Thank Good. you, Doc. Okay. Uh -huh. Which, do you have um, your um, final words for our audience? Well, I think that was a good one, right? So I hope you will you will uh, you will move this theory, right, and um, advance it in the ways you can you can use. And I think um, uh, the way to move the theory would be based on how you study it, okay? mm -hmm. and read some more some more questions. And if there's a, if there's a, uh, an opportunity for you to ask me questions, uh, please do. Just send me an email, right? Loxin50 at gmail.com. Uh, 50 because that I was 50 years old. People say, "Why 50? You're already 60." No, I was 50 <laughs> years old when I when I did this um, uh, email address. So, uh, so do so. You won't you won't forget uh, that that's it's easy. Loxin50 at gmail.com. Okay, send me an email and then uh, we can discuss. Okay, all right. 
So thank you very much. And I hope, as I said, um, to please move the theory, use it, okay? And find out what it is that is not useful. And then, um, you know, from there, create a new theory. That would be, a, a theory is not a law, right? It's only, it only serves for four, four purposes, to predict, to prescribe, to explain, and to describe the phenomenon, right? It has to be a, a phenomenon of nursing, okay? Not the phenomena of phenomenon of healthcare, okay? and nursing, and where do you get this phenomena? All right, from nursing theories, just like I said in in technological competency as caring in nursing, uh, cared for, being cared for, or caring for. Uh, if you want, uh, if you want to use Rosemary Parser, it's universal lived experiences. All right, if you look at Boykin and Schonefer, it's going to be caring between. These are the phenomena that you're going to be studying. What is the pairing between this person and then the other person? Okay, so um, good luck in your studies, right? And uh, let me know how best I can help you, okay, if it's necessary, right? So thank you, Ria. Thank you so much for the for those who are involved in getting this done. Uh, I appreciate your patience as well. Okay, I love technology, but sometimes technology doesn't <laughs> love me, so. I have to I have to become a slave to technology. Okay. Thank you again. All right. And good morning. Thank you, um, Doc, and thank you to those who participated during our open forum. Um, before I let you um, go, uh, let's do a quick recap on Dr. No uh, Dr. Nila's discussion. He was able to um, orient us with the different concepts of the technological competency as caring and nursing theory. He was able to explain the assumptions of theory as well as the processes of knowing persons as caring within the, the theory of technological competency as caring in nursing. And then there was also a very good discussion on the theoretical dimensions of technologies. Of course, Doc Nilo, was able to give us an idea on how we can incorporate his model for our proposed studies. My favorite um, um, is the, actually the definition of terms, providing care requires knowing the person, the client is a business term, patient is passive. It's a um, universally understood term, but it's, you know, it means objects of care. So we have to use person being nursed okay right. so i would start using that and share that to my students as well so there so i also loved it when he said competence without compassion is brutal and compassion without competence. i was trying to remember compassion without competence is negligence am i it's, correct doc yes. okay it's, it's irresponsible Okay, so irresponsible. Is, is, is irresponsible. Thank you. Thank yeah. you. Um, and then we would also like to thank Dr. Um, Luxin for sharing his experiences and knowledge with us. I am honored and grateful that he accepted our invitation to be um, the speaker of this webinar. I'd like to extend my gratitude to FMDS Dean Joan Serrano for, ex, um, for helping us implement this. We would also like to thank everyone who participated and watched uh, this program. Again, we hope that you have learned a lot from our speaker. Uh, we would like to thank our MC team headed by Director Lisa Helisan for the technical assistance. Thank you, everyone. We hope that you will attend our next Let's, Let's Talk It Over webinar. Please follow the nursing program of FMDS on Facebook for announcements. For the webinar certificates, please copy the link or the QR code of the evaluation that is now flush, flashed on your screen screens. Again, only those who accomplished the evaluation form shall be issued certificates. The evaluation link will only be available for 12 hours. Again, this is Ria Valerie Cabanes. Thank you, everyone, and to the MAN program for making this webinar possible. Let's all be safe. Okay. Thank you so much.